good good afternoon I guess morning or afternoon depending on where you are everybody my name is Rachel Buell I've been with uh, CATI and affiliated companies for about eight years now and um, I'm here to talk to you today about custom properties tab so this is a great way to streamline your custom property input if you're using the classic methods then this might be a great change for you so first of all let's go ahead and just talk about a little bit of the key takeaways we're going to get out of this. We're going to see that using the custom property tab is super convenient. It's right on the task pane and it involves a lot of preloaded options. You'll also be able to customize your custom property tab to suit your needs and that includes for part files, assembly files, drawing files, and even specifically for weldment files. And also this is going to give you a great step forward in your consistency goals. So sharing a custom properties file on a network drive, for example, so that all users are using it. So let's go ahead and uh, just talk for a second in general about what file properties are, and then we'll jump over and start talking about the custom property tab specifically. File properties really, they're just details about a file. Even regular old you know, Word documents and everything else, they all have Windows-based properties, for example, the file size or the date created, things like that. And then there's SOLIDWORKS-based properties. These are, of course, going to be your things like part number, description, things that are specific to our industry. We're going to be seeing, well, actually, we won't talk about this in this presentation, but some are automatically populated and some are user-specified. We're going to be talking about the user-specified ones. File properties are, of course, searchable, and they're able to be referenced by other files. So, for example, if you were looking at a drawing, this is one of the most basic uses of file properties in a bill of materials. Say we see this drawing here on the right side, and the description is missing from one of the parts, the cannon wheel. Well, if we open the actual part file and go to file properties, you'll see that the file property of description is missing. So. I'm just going to go ahead and jump over to SOLIDWORKS and fix that for us real quick. So here's the drawing file and you can see the description is missing from the part called Cannon Wheel here. So I'll open the part called Cannon Wheel and one of the most basic ways to do your file properties is to literally go File Properties and we can add for a description in the property name column, a description for this. So say if we did 45 millimeter wheel, there we go. And now, since the drawing file is referencing the part file, we'll see when we jump back over there that that is now populated. Okay, So that's your uh, most basic method to input file properties. So let's jump back over here. And that, on this slide here, I'm talking about some methods to input custom properties, I call that a method that works, right? There are better ways. There are more streamlined ways, more efficient ways, faster ways. For example, these two methods in the middle here, I don't really, these are not prioritized. These are pretty much the same um, advantage in my opinion. You could open your part template and put in your file properties first column in your part template. Say you know that typically when you make a part, you're always going to want to put a description, a part number, and a vendor. Do that on your file, or on, excuse me, on your part template, and that'll save you some time every time you use that part template for a specific part file. Another way is to create a bill of materials template that already has the columns you want instead of in the actual part file properties, you could do it in your bill of materials, because then when you edit a cell in your bill of materials, as long as you keep the link, it'll push that info back to the part. So that's another way, but really the fastest way is gonna be a custom properties tab. And I say fastest, but really it's also much more customizable and so therefore it's got a lot of benefits, a lot of advantages. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would mean. So this is a little video and um, it's just, um, I don't remember how long it is exactly, about a minute and 20 seconds. And I'm gonna talk while the video is playing, but this is our goal. This is what we want to happen. I'll go ahead and hit play here. So what you'll see is this particular part file currently has no file properties assigned. If I go to file properties, 
custom tab and configuration specific tab are both empty. But this is what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to go over to the task pane here on the right side and click custom properties tab right there and see an interface like this where we can just type in our part number and our description. The material is already populated there. The created date gives me an actual calendar I can select a date off of. The created by has all of my people. I can just pick their name. Some of them have a past QA checkbox and some of them don't, depending on who it is. And then purchased, yes or no. If you have no selected, then that's the end. But if yes, you can do a vendor. And if we do vendor of East Coast stuff, we have East Coast cities under location. And if we do a vendor of West Coast, we have West Coast cities under location. So you can see how, first of all, nobody spelled anything wrong, right? Nobody had to type their name in manually. There's a lot of automation in that. And also there is a lot of, um, there were a couple of conditions there. And you can see how all those properties were now populated into the file properties interface. Okay, so that's our goal. That's what we wanna get out of this. So I took a screenshot of this um, so I can more easily reference it. Go ahead and do this here. We're going to build this interface. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to SolidWorks and make this happen. So I can go ahead and close these two files real quick here. All right, so we're actually going to make this now the way you saw it in the video. So First of all, I just want to confirm if I go on this part here and go to file properties that there are no properties at all. Do recall that there is a custom tab and a configuration specific tab. If you're not using configurations, you can use the custom tab. But even if you're not using configurations, you can still use the configuration specific tab just in case you end up adding configurations later. Uh, so that's that's an option stick with the configuration specific tab so just so you know eventually when we do populate some they'll be in here but as of now nothing so I'm going to close out of that interface and I'm going to go over here to the custom properties tab in the task pane when you click this if this is the first time you've ever done it you'll see this interface here with the yellow message it says a property page for part files was not found well that's because I've never made one yet right this is our first time if you want to go ahead and make one, click Create Now. And I'll go ahead and click it. And what it does is it launches what we call the Property Tab Builder. And it, I think it opened on my other screen here. Where are you? There it is. This is the Property Tab Builder. This is the interface that we're going to use in order to create the interface we want to see over here. Okay. We're going to see it has three columns. The group, or excuse me, the first column is, I like to think of these as a couple of stacks of cards. And whatever one I want to add into here, I just grab one off of the top of the stack and put it in here. So this is basically my tools or my, maybe my supplies, whatever you want to think of it as. The middle part is where we're actually building it. And then the right side here, this is the details about whatever you have selected. Okay, so for example, notice in the middle, it says we already have one group box. By default, we already have a group box. What is a group box? Well, when we look at our goal here, you can see how it has a section for part information, and then a section for management, and then a section for vendor information. That is your group boxes. So we're actually going to want three group boxes ultimately, one for part info, one for management, and one for vendor info. Okay, So we can go ahead and add two more if you want, or you could save it for later. Either way is fine. If you decide you wanted to get rid of them, you can right-click and delete. Let's just focus on one at a time. How about that? So when you select the group box, you are now looking at its attributes over here. So you can customize what it says on the caption. I want that first section to be, what was it again? Part information, part information. So I'll go ahead and change the caption to part information. There we go. Now, when you don't have anything selected, you are looking at the attributes of this entire 
custom property tab that I'm creating right now. And this is an important step that a lot of people often skip. So be careful with nothing selected. I want to make sure that this pull down menu is set to the appropriate type of file I'm going to be using it on. I'm trying to make a part property template or excuse me, a part custom properties tab. So I'm going to make sure I'm on part. You would probably put different custom properties in for a drawing than you would for a part, right? So that's why it is specific to the file type. So make sure we're on part there. In the part group box, I want part number, description, and material. These are actually all three going to be a text box, or three text, I should say. They're each going to be a text box. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab from my column of tools over here a text box and drag it in and let go. I'll just go ahead and grab three of them. There we go. And then I'll go through and customize each one of them. So I'll select the first one and start with the caption. Now the caption is just what the user sees. So in the case of this one, it obviously says part number, but you could put more than that. You could put like, what is the part number question mark? You could make a full sentence out of it if you want. It's just what the user will see. A lot of folks keep it simple and they just put the word, so say part number. And then the custom property attributes, this is asking you, what do you want to happen when someone fills in the information? When someone actually comes in here and types A-123, what happens to that? Where does it go? That's what this is right here. So the property, it will populate when someone fills it in. That's what we're going to choose from here. I would like that to populate the actual property called part number. And it is a text. There's also a date option or a yes, no option. I'll just leave it on text. And then if you wanted to have it already filled out, you could put something in here. But it doesn't really make sense for us to do that if we're going to use this on lots of different files. So I'll just leave that blank. Okay. All right. The second one, we want to be, what is it again? Description and then material. Okay. So the second one, I've got it selected, and I'll just put in description, maybe description colon, or what is the description, or type description here, or whatever, as long as the user gets what they're asking for there. And then we have, again, when someone uses it, what property do I want it to fill in, in the file properties? I want it to actually populate the property called description. So I'll just fill that in. And then again, I won't actually put anything on there because I want it to be blank when the user finds this. For the third one, I want it to be material. So I'll type in material, colon, and then what property do I want it to populate when someone actually fills it in? I want it to populate the property of material. But actually this one, I am gonna pre-populate something into here because remember when we watched that video and it was already populated? It is actually going to fill in whatever material the part has if I use this pull down menu and tell it to get that. Just like when you're in the actual file properties interface, if you type something in, then it's not linked. Right. But if you use the pull down menu, you can tell SolidWorks, hey, go grab the actual material from your tree. That's what I want that to do. So that's going to be automated. So now we have our three text boxes there inside the part info group box. Next, we want a group box called management. And this will have the created date and the created by and the past QA. So the management group box, we'll grab a group box here, drag it down into there and let go. And again, if I select it, I can make the caption whatever I want it to be. In this case, management, colon, or actually no colon on this one. There we go. So the first thing I want in the management group box is the created date. And remember from the video, it actually has a little calendar that pops up. 
that is still a text box, kind of a funny one because it's a different, a uh, little different than what we made our three text boxes up top. But I will drag a text box into there. And I'll do create a date. That's what I want it to say. The actual property it populates in this case, I'm going to pick drawn date date. So although the user will see the words created date, when they actually put a date in there, the file property it's going to populate is drawn date. And then I'll change the type to date. There we go. Now it'll show a little calendar for them to select the date off of. The other one that we want is some radio buttons, the created by. So say we have you know, five or six people in the office, and I just want to put their names in. So all they have to do is select their name. Easy enough. So I'm going to use the radio button here, drag that in right below the created date there, and we'll make the radio button say, the question it's asking, right, is created by colon. Now, this one's a little different than a text box, so let's take a look. The property I want it to populate is maybe the drawn by, uh, the drawn by property. There we go. And then I can put in the quantity. Say we have five people. I'll go ahead and put five for the quantity. And then the label and the value. This is similar to the caption and the name of the property in that we might have somebody named Smith but he goes by Smitty. So we want him, we want everybody to see Smitty, but if that is selected, what actually goes into the property is Smith. So a lot of these might be the same, right? We might have Wilson and just put Wilson and all the way down. Um, now I'm trying to think of names here. And let's see, we'll do Jones and Williams. There we go. So most of them will probably be the same label and value, but like I said, maybe if you got a nickname person or something, you want them to be able to select their nickname, but actually it'll populate with their actual name. Okay. Now down here at the bottom, we see this advanced options section. This we're going to come back to in a few minutes, but what this does is it allows you to make some sort of conditional happen with another question. For example, if you remember from our little video, when I selected right, the past QA checkbox didn't show up. Only if I selected Hughes, Buell, Rice, Nelson, or Reinert did that checkbox even show up. Maybe Mr. Wright does simple parts that don't need to go to QA or something like that, right? So if you have that as a scenario, you can make a little conditional situation there. So let's do that. We'll grab a checkbox and drag it in here. And again, if I select it, I can customize it. I want it to say past QA question mark. And then the property that I want it to populate is going to be QA approval. And then I want the default to be unchecked. So I want them to actually have to check it if it is passed or not. So QA approval is the property. If they do check mark it, then the QA approval property will say what? That's what I put in here. So maybe I'll put yes and no. Oops, no, there we go go. So it'll say past QA and it'll just be you either check it or don't like you see here. If you do check it, then the QA approval property will say yes in the file properties. If you don't check it, then the QA approval property will say no in the file properties. Okay. But hold on. We actually only want that to show up if Maybe Wilson, Black, Jones, or Williams is selected. Maybe like I was saying before, one of the people is maybe an intern or only works on the certain types of, um, a certain category of parts that doesn't need QA approval or something like that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this created by radio button and look at those advanced options. Notice what it says is select the controls that should be visible only when these options are selected. So only if Wilson is selected do I want the QA checkbox to show up and Black and Jones and Williams. There we go. So now only if Wilson, Black, Jones, or Williams is selected, will that checkbox even show up. If Smitty is selected, the checkbox won't even show up. Okay, so we got a little conditional thing going on there now. We are going to need another group box next. We have this third section called vendor information. So I'll go ahead and grab another group box drag it on in here down to the bottom. And again, with it selected, I'll just change its caption. We'll call it vendor information. There we go. Okay, so in this one, I want a radio button for whether or not this item is purchased. So I'm gonna do a purchased yes or no. And we'll do that with a radio button. Drag that in and let go. There we go. The caption for this is going to be purchased, question mark. I'm doing it a little different than our original, but still. And so, Rachel, a little quick one popped in. Um, can you have an other box? You can for certain ones. So for example, if you have a list pull down menu, um, let's see, I think I am, there we go. If you have a list, this one, I can show you here, I'll drag a list in. If you put in right here, allow custom values. So if you had, you know, maybe you've got like, you know, five people that work there, but then you have a rotating intern. You don't want to have to modify this every time you swap out an intern. So you can put, you know, Mr. Alpha, Mr. Bravo, Mr. Charlie, Mrs. Delta, and Mrs. Echo, and then you can have allow custom values. So you can put in, you know, Mr. Foxtrot and Mrs. Gamma as they show up for their monthly intern rotation. Okay. Not for a radio button, but yes, for a list. Okay. Maybe even a conditional would be nice too. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you can work that into the conditionals too, yeah. Yeah, great. Did that answer that question? Seem to, yes, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so let's do this purchased one. This is gonna be another radio button. We've already done one, so pretty straightforward there. If with it selected, I'll change its caption to purchased. And then what property do I want this to populate? So if I scroll down through these default properties, this is, I haven't customized any of this. This is just the way SolidWorks is. Say I actually want a property called purchased. And I'm looking through here and it's just not one of the properties by default. Well, you can go ahead and type that in. If I want a property called purchased, then I'll just type it in. Now, this is something you can do in the actual file properties interface as well. If you click the edit text button, it'll edit that actual list. This does not edit the actual list, but it just forces a brand new file property on each file you use it on. So it works, you know, with the same effectiveness. I'll have two radio buttons for this one, just a regular old yes and no. And then over here, again, what do I want it to actually populate into the property if they pick yes? In this case, maybe I just want it to say yes and no if it says no. Pretty straightforward. So if they check mark, or excuse me, if they select the radio button yes, then the property of purchased will actually say yes in the file properties and no if they say no. Now, this is going to be another conditional thing here. If they say no, then I don't want the vendor or the location to show up. Only if they say yes do I want that to happen. So I am going to go ahead and create the vendor and the location. These are the pull down menus. They're actually officially, they're called lists. But uh, they, I'm going to go ahead and create them both first, and then I'll go back and make that conditional situation happen. I'll grab the list and drag it in down here. 
and for this first list I'll do vendor and these are kind of funny generic examples so excuse the uh, the silliness of it but what popular or what property do I want it to populate maybe actually vendor and then the list here I can just put in whatever I want to uh, you know these uh, these categories of vendors or the excuse me not categories but these two vendors I have here East Coast menu and West Coast very creative naming they've used there we go <laughs> right and we could also allow custom values say we don't always order from ECM or WCM sometimes we order from you know Canada or something who knows we can do allow custom values so now not only will they have the pull down menu but they could also just type into that box if they need to throw the location one on there too for the list I'll drag that in there and this one will be location colon oops colon here we go and this one what property again do I want it to populate let's see I don't have one called location maybe we're going to use the source property for this one or you could just type in location if you want one called location. Now this one is going to be dependent upon if they chose East Coast or West Coast, isn't it? So we're going to have to do the conditional thing first because if they chose East Coast, then I want to see things like Austin, DC, or Atlanta. And if they chose West Coast, then I might see some different cities down here question in the chat can the list be driven with an SQL query I'm not positive on that question Peter maybe if you want to throw me your email address I can find that answer for you afterward and shoot you an email Would that be fun? I know I'm pretty sure you can incorporate in with it so I'm, I'm not positive so I don't want to say yes but I'll double check throw me your email there and I'll, I'll get you that answer so how do we make that conditional Basically, we want this to be split into two columns. I want a column for East Coast stuff and a column for West Coast stuff. So really, I'm going to have to pause for a second and go back up to the vendor and the purchased. Right. So if we go to the purchased, first of all, only if yes is selected, do I want the vendor or location to show up? There we go. So now, if anyone does select no, those won't even show up. Okay. Now, for the actual breakdown of the east versus west, we're actually going to go here to parent. So on the location list, I'm going to check, or excuse me, I'm going to click the plus sign right there. I want this particular property to be a child of this one. So I'm going to click the little plus sign and then I'll choose vendor to be its parent. And there you go. So now the two answers you can answer for vendor, East Coast or West Coast, are a column header now for the locations. So I'll list East Coast stuff here and West Coast stuff here. Okay, so it's a slightly different way to make a conditional there. So say if we did East Coast, Atlanta, and Baltimore and um, trying to think of another East Coast random East Coast city how about Charlotte okay and for West Coast manufacturing maybe we'll have Sacramento or LA or um, Portland there we go. And of course, if, if, as long as you keep hitting enter, you can add more and more. You can also populate this from a Excel. So check it out right here. There's a source, or excuse me, right here under type list. You can also use an Excel file. So if you have a big giant list of things you'd want to use a list like this for, you can. Okay. Question in the chat, or maybe this is a comment, or no, yeah, question. Using the created by list as an example, if one of the people leave and their name is removed from the list, will that affect their name being on the drawings that they created? No, they'll stay. 
they'll stay. Yeah, the information from this pushes to the file, and so therefore it is now owned by the file. This is really just a tool to push information there. The property tab builder builds a custom properties file. If you edit that custom properties file, uh, let me let me clarify. It builds a custom property tab file, which is just what makes this interface look the way it looks. So yeah, if you went and edit it later, it's not going to un undo their names off of old files or anything. Yeah. So Rachel, while you're answering that comment, um, I was doing some looking. I did find an SPR for that. Okay, great. The SQL queries. So I'm going to do a little bit more digging, and I'll share the SPR with everybody at the end. Cool. Thanks, Bob. All right, great. So now we've got uh, pretty much we've we've gone all the way to the end here. So just uh, one cool thing to note, I do want to just point out. I did mention the Excel file. You can actually populate any list from an Excel file too. It's a pretty cool deal. So now we've put all this work into building this really cool interface. Now, how do we make it go over here? Well, we're using again the custom property tab builder. So I need to now save this custom property file. Before I do this though, where should I save it? If I hit save, it's gonna save what's called a part property template. It's a PRT, PRP. If I had changed it to assembly, it'd be ASM, PRP. Or if it was a drawing, it'd be DRW, PRP. Or if it was a weldment, WLD, PRP. Where should I save this though, before I do any of this thing. I'm, I'm going to cancel for a sec. Remember how we decide on things like that? We got to see where SolidWorks looks for them, right? If we go to our options, the little gear, and go to file locations, this is how we get on the same page with SolidWorks about where everything lives. In other words, where does SolidWorks look for a given file type? So if I use the pull down menu, and I go to custom property files. There we go. By default, there is this file location, C program data, SolidWorks, SolidWorks 2020, Lang English. And this happens to be one of them that, on, that only allows one file location. Some others you can you know fill this up with a whole bunch of them, but this particular one, custom property files, you're only allowed one file location. Now, if you're just a one person show and you want to just leave it like that, then you know I should go save my custom property files in that file location because that's where SolidWorks looks for them. But if you're in a group environment, you would probably want to take this awesome custom property tab that you just built and share it with everybody, right? But you don't want to make a whole bunch of copies of it and send them all out to everybody because then if you needed to update something, like say, for example, the question that had come into the chat, what if somebody leaves and I want to take them off the list? Or what if we get a new hire? You don't want to copy this thing and send it out to everybody. Instead, you want to keep it in a network file location, right? So say your K drive or whatever your shared file location or your shared drive is, put it there. Right, so maybe map this, map everybody's computer to point to that one particular network file location and then save any of your custom property files you want to save in that spot. So everybody's computer will have the same interface. Okay, for us, I'll just use that file location and I'll go ahead and click OK and let's jump back over there and, and do the save here. I'll click save and it is under C program data. SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS 2020, Lang English, and I'll give it a name. So say I'll call it Company Part Properties tab. It is a, like I said, PRT, PRP. I'll go ahead and hit save. Okay, so now I can close out of the property tab builder. I've utilized it and saved a property, a custom properties file. So now how do I actually use it in a part? Say I'm looking at this part here and I jump over to the custom properties tab. Uh oh, it still looks the same as it did before, but do note it says press F5 to refresh the page. So I'll hit F5. And look at that, it already shows me, boom, there we go. This is the property tab we just built together. Now, do be aware that it 
if you had more than one. So say you've got different file properties for a different project or you've got different engineers on a different project. You might want to have a property tab for that project and a different property tab for this project or maybe you know for different divisions or something like that. You can make many of them and save them all in that same file location. And then if you do have more than one, you'll actually be able to select from a pull down menu which property tab you want to use. Or you can also click right here where it says click for template options. And here, this pull down menu would have all of your properties tabs that you've built, all your part properties tabs, all your part property files. So let's say we'll give it a test. We'll say our part number is A 123. Our description is saddle. Our material is automatically populated from the tree. Let me go ahead and make that something more appealing. There we go. So there we go, 1060 alloy. The created date, get a little calendar. So today's the day. Notice if I select Smitty, I don't have a QA checkbox. But if I select anybody else, it does. Let's say Williams was the person today and it already has passed QA. I'll check it. Then is it purchased or not? If it's not purchased, those other two go away. So let's leave it on yes. And then we'll say West Coast and we'll say Portland. So now what? All of that stuff I just did here, how does it push up into the file properties? I just have to hit apply. There we go. Once I've hit apply, we can go to file properties and check it out. All of that information now is pushed into the file properties. Now that's not to say that this is interface is now, um, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, inactive. You can still do this if you were looking at this and you were like, oh, wait, no. Whoops, this is not purchased. Let's change that to no, right? You can still override stuff here, okay? And hit OK. If you do that, you'll see that did not, wait, what did I say purchased, right? Yeah, it, did, it does change it over here if you've change it in there too. So they do work together. And um, so we can also, you know, still use this if anybody does have kind of an old habits die hard sort of situation. Okay. All right, awesome. So there we go. That's your custom properties tab. Great way to maintain consistency. Nobody's going to spell anything wrong uh, with, you know, like if you're putting in somebody else's name or putting in a locate. How do you spell Sacramento again? <laughs> right? You don't have to worry about any of that if you've got pull down menus and things like that. So it really helps to speed up an individual's work. And it also helps everybody as a group to uh, obviously with time and with the consistency aspect. So let me jump back over here for a sec here. So yeah, in a nutshell, it's really super convenient. It's right on your task pane. You got all that preloaded stuff and even conditionals. Very customizable. We did one for a part, but we could also do one for an assembly, a drawing, a weldment, and the consistency I already spoke about. Having that thing on the network drive and making sure everybody's computers are pointed to that one particular network file is going to allow you to uh, you know, keep the consistency across the board. So I do welcome more questions. Thank you all for your questions along the way.